With the release of Luck in the first film from Skydance Animation, John Lasseter stepped out with his first project after leaving his role as Disney's chief creative officer and the longtime head of Pixar. His time at Disney ended in controversy, with him basically being ousted due to the accusations from different staff about unwanted touching. But with a few years away from the limelight and with a new position running a new studio, has Lasseter once again changed the animation world? Will Skydance Animation be a major competitor in the market? My name's Josh Taylor, this is Modern Mouse, and today I want to talk about Skydance Animation, their new movie Luck, and if John Lasseter is still one of the most prolific minds in animation, or if his time has come and gone. I grew up being amazed by Toy Story. For a long time, it was the only movie I'd ever seen twice in theaters. I collected a lot of the different toys over the years. In fact, a lot of them still sit behind me on this wall. Like, come on, this is fun, right? I credit John Lasseter with my renewed love of animation and adulthood. In the 2000s, when Disney wasn't doing as well as they had during their renaissance, I still made it to the theater for every new Pixar film. With all of that said, by the time Lasseter and Disney parted ways in 2018, I personally felt that his best days as a creative were behind him. When Skydance decided to hire John Lasseter, I was kind of surprised. Would this be the break that John Lasseter needed? Could he turn his career around after he himself had ruined his reputation? Could he prove that he was still one of the best creative minds in all of animation? But let's back up a second here because when John Lasseter was announced as the new head of a brand new animation division at Skydance Media, I think that there were some expectations that were never going to get met. John Lasseter, along with Ed Catmull, truly created Pixar animation. The Pixar company that had been working with computers had to transform into an animation studio over a number of years. Originally, they were just a small computer company who hired Lasseter to show just how good the graphics were for their computers. I also don't think that we give Ed Catmull enough credit for his contributions to Pixar. While Lasseter was definitely the creative story guy, Catmull was the engineer. Without him, we wouldn't have had the changing of the guard from hand-drawn animation to CGI. He's the one that truly pushed the technology forward. While Lasseter was telling brilliant stories, Catmull was the one revolutionizing the industry. So with this new opening of Skydance Animation, there was never going to be this grand revolution in animation. On top of that, while being touted as the new expansion to Skydance Media, nothing was really new about the animation department. Skydance Media had been around since the mid-2000s, and Skydance Animation was actually just a new name for Ilian Animation Studios that operate out of Spain. Skydance Media had actually been working with them since 2017 as partners. It just so happened that when John Lasseter joined Skydance, they opted to acquire the company. Ilian might be most famously known for their 2019 movie Wonder Park, which didn't do well with critics or general audiences. If you've seen the film, you know that it has a pretty formulaic look and doesn't really stand out as anything other than just another CGI animated movie. And that brings us to luck. While being the company's first Skydance film under Lasseter's supervision as executive producer, it had actually already been in the works. It was announced in 2017, two years prior to Lasseter's hiring. And when Lasseter was brought in to be the head of animation, much of the movie's cast and crew changed, stemming off of the allegations that were against Lasseter. Paramount Pictures, who had helped release Wonder Park, refused to be associated with Skydance after his hiring. Emma Thompson was originally cast to be in the film too, but she left and was replaced with Jane Fonda. Luck was rounded out with several people that Lasseter had known and had worked with. Director Peggy Holmes, who had previously worked on the Tinkerbell movies, and Keel Murray, who had worked on all of the different Cars films at Pixar, were both hired by Lasseter. I'm also not sure why Apple TV opted to take Luck and one other future film from Skydance Animation for its streaming service. I can only imagine they felt that Lasseter's name was still a big enough pull in the industry. And that brings us up to the present. Luck has 
been released on Apple's streaming service after a big advertising push. Its release has many animation fans asking the same questions that I have. Does Lassiter still have something to offer? I actually had to subscribe to Apple TV Plus to do this video. I'd never subscribed to it before. In fact, I've never been a big fan of Apple products. I know that they're supposed to be for creative people, but I've never owned an Apple computer. In fact, my phone is an Android phone. And in the 2000s, when iPods were at their biggest peak, I was the person that owned the Microsoft Zune. I know there's plenty of people that say, who actually owned a Zune? It was me. I did that. I owned the Microsoft Zune. So yeah, it finally took making a video for this channel, for Modern Mouse, in order for me to subscribe to their service. And if you do have any suggestions for Apple TV+, Plus, because I now have it for a little while, you can leave some comments down below and tell me what I should probably watch, like Ted Lasso or something like that. But I did jump in right away to watching Luck. If you've not heard about the film, don't worry, I'm not going to spoil anything for you, but let me give just a brief synopsis. Sam, who's a very unlucky girl, finds herself with a streak of good fortune after crossing paths with a black cat. Unfortunately, she soon finds herself in a totally different world, the land of luck, and in order to get back home, she has to help the creatures of this world. It's a cute premise for a movie, but it doesn't really compare to the work that both Pixar and Disney Animation are currently doing. It doesn't create memorable and iconic characters like Illumination has with the Minions or what DreamWorks has done over the last 25 years or so. Luck is more or less a film that I'll probably forget by the end of this year. So to answer the larger questions here, Luck is not the breakout redemption story for John Lasseter. Luck is not Toy Story. And I think something has to be said that this company wasn't built from the ground up like Pixar was. Their style of animation wasn't looking to develop anything new, and while Lasseter was a brilliant mind for animation, he really needs a figure like Ed Catmull to be by his side in order to help change what animation can be. Ultimately, Skydance's hiring of John Lasseter feels like more of a way to capitalize on a big name rather than to try and create something that can truly compete in the animation world. Luck isn't a film that you're going to get emotional about. It's not a film that will likely get any award nominations. Are Lasseter's best days behind him in terms of creating magical, timeless stories? I can't really tell for sure. Skydance Animation does have some other films in production, some that John Lasseter signed off on himself. Maybe Skydance just has a few kinks that they need to work out in order to make that transition from a small overseas animation studio to a fully-fledged contender against studios like Pixar and Illumination and Disney. But for now, Skydance Animation is just another studio, and we'll probably have to keep a close eye on the animation world to see if it evolves and changes over the next few years. Is animation due for a new revolution where everything changes in how movies are made or what they look like? I'd like to think so, but we're just not there yet. Thanks for watching this video and sticking around until the end. I always appreciate those people that stick around and watch the post credits. Uh, if you like this video, give it a big old thumbs up. If you've not subscribed to the channel, do so. Why haven't you? And uh, until next time, my friends, thank you for watching. Maybe watch something else right here and uh, keep moving forward.